All right, here we go. Today we have former NYPD detective and DEA and FBI task force officer Bill Courtney. Welcome to Vlad TV. Thanks for having me, Vlad. I appreciate it. Well, you have a lot of interesting stories that we're going to go into today, but I want to start in the very beginning. So you were born and raised in the Bronx. Correct. Okay. And what made you want to join law enforcement? Uh, my father was a cop. Uh, he was, uh, I guess what you'd call an undercover detective. Uh, and my family has a history in the NYPD going back to the 1800s. 1800s. So I didn't wow. know what I wanted to do in life. And uh, I was a music kid, uh, went to all the clubs, bars, hung out, everything was music. But at the end of the day, there was no, I had no talent. So <laughs> it was uh, take the civil service exam and become a cop, you know. Okay. So you graduated the police academy Correct. in 83? Uh, yeah. You became a cop. And uh, you first started working on robberies. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I, I paid my dues in uniform for a bit and then went into plainclothes units and they were all, you know, looking for guys doing, you know, strong arm and gunpoint robberies. And then from there, I went into the detective bureau and that's all I did was like uh, pattern robberies, commercial robberies, things like that. And, uh, and then uh, later on, I started to get into the robbery of drug dealers and that type of thing. Okay. And for those that don't know, what's the difference between being a cop and being a detective? Yeah. So in the NYPD, um, you used to have to take uh, a career path choice, whether you went into narcotics or you were into a robbery squad. And after you were there for a, a certain amount of time, uh, I, I think it's, I think now you have to be there 18 months. Uh, you would get promoted to detective. And then from there, you could end up in a variety of places. Uh, you know, precinct detective, homicide units, all sorts of specialized units, robbery squads, homicide squads. And, uh, you know, I, I was lucky I got to, to travel around and go to a, I was in a, a lot of really good units and met a lot of great guys, a lot of great, you know, talented guys. And was really, really lucky and fortunate to have uh, uh, lived in uh, that life. I mean, it was just, it was rocking and rolling all the time. A lot of fun. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cases that you worked on. And let's start with the Supreme Team case. Yeah, so uh, I first started uh, to become aware of a lot of the 5% gangs in New York. Most of them were in Queens, Canarsie, Brooklyn, Long Island. And uh, so I knew a little bit about them and their history. Um, and then one day I, I happened to be in the 103rd Precinct in Queens and a detective showed me a letter about the Supreme Team. And this guy, Kenneth McGriff, he's laundering all his drug money through murder ink records. He financed the film and um, he's, uh, you know, his history, of course, everything about the Supreme Team was in in this letter and, you know, you got to do something kind of thing. And so uh, knowing the history of the Supreme Team, the history of uh, Eddie Byrne, the police officer that was murdered, uh, and all those violent crews back then, right away the case kind of appealed to me. Uh, and then, of course, there was the music side of it and this whole 50 Cent versus Murder Rank thing that really was interesting. And I got to pick and choose cases, and I was like, "I'm this is I'm taking this one. This is a good one." Yeah. Okay. So the Supreme Team, you worked on this case for five years. Yeah, if not longer. Yeah. And did you actually meet uh, Kenneth Supreme McGriff? Well, I met him. The first time I met him was when I arrested him in <laughs> in Miami at two o'clock in the morning. He was naked with a girl in bed, and uh, I was kind of surprised to see us. I think it was like three days after Christmas. Uh, so, uh, that was the first time I met him. And, uh, after that, it was in the courtroom, you know, years later, uh, when we arrested him, this girl started going berserk in the hotel room and he was like, Hey, calm down. You know, they're just doing their jobs. He was, you know, the gentleman gangster wasn't excitable. Wasn't, you know, uh, he definitely had some charm and charisma to him. Um, and we had a nice little conversation on our way over to the lockup, um, we had a warrant, I guess, that came off of his indictment in uh, the Eastern District. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and then from there, it was, you know, uh, tightening up the case. And then there was all sorts of craziness with the uh, 
the IRS part of the case with the Gotti brothers and all that. But that was the beginning of the the wild ride with the whole thing. And uh, 